Hi, welcome to the Fire Mountain Gems and Beads Jewelry Making Studio. I'm Lisa Pavelka and I'm going to show you how to make eye-catching crystal jewelry that's as easy as one, two, three. Today we're going to start with working with the epoxy sculpt two-part self-hardening clay. Epoxy sculpt comes in different sizes and different colors, but today we're going to work with the black because that's what's going to frame our crystals and really make them pop. So we're mixing up just a tiny little bit. You can see here, I've only mixed up the size of maybe a large pea. And we're going to use it with a 20 millimeter Swarovski Elements Cosmic Crystal Ring. This is one with a foil backing, so it's going to add to the reflection of all the other crystals. So I'm going to set it right down here on Teflex paper, non-stick surface that you can also use with metal clays. I'm placing my pea-sized bit of clay in the center and gently pressing down with my fingertip to flatten it, making it a canvas that's going to receive the lovely, lovely crystals that will fill the inside of the ring. So we start with chiton crystals. If you're not familiar with a the chiton, they're pointed back crystals that resemble what you would think of when you think of a traditionally cut diamond. They have a pointed back. But you can also use the Swarovski Element flat back crystals as well. Chitons spark a little bit more, and that's why I like to work with them. So we start with the largest crystals, and when I say large, I mean really, really tiny, but the largest of the tiny ones. These are about two millimeters across, and I've chosen a palette of blues, you might throw in some purples or aquas, whatever you like. And with a needle tool or toothpick, you make a few small holes, these are pilot holes that are actually more like a setting for three, four, or maybe five of your largest crystals. I'm using diamond tip tweezers so I have control over the crystals and I pick them up by the edge when they're upside down. That is also referred to as the girdle of the stone. Flip it over and I just lay them down wherever I've created a hole. And you'll just use those holes for the largest of your crystals. You won't need to do that when you work down to the smaller sizes. Press the crystal down so it's nice and flat and that the table of the stone is level with the surface of your clay. The table is the flat facet that's on the top of a faceted stone or crystal. So after you put in just a few of those, I'm going to work down to a smaller size and a different color. Let's just add a few more spots. That's the last time we'll do that. And you just keep going until you fill in with as many crystals as you like. Some people might prefer to leave some of the colored clay showing through the background. I personally like to have as much of the exposed clay filled with crystal as possible. And I work from largest to smallest until I end up with something that looks a little bit like this. I think more is more and less is a bore. So the more crystal, the better I like it. I'm going to let that set up for about two to three hours until it hardens. But before I do that, you might want to take a, decor a decorative jump ring, a bale, or a piece of wire that you're going to fabricate later into a suspension, and just push it onto the back of your piece like I've done here. Let that dry, and then come back mixing up a very small amount of your epoxy clay again and covering the back so that you can seal and lock in your bale. You can texture it and trim it off to give it a nice professional quality. And let's take a look at a larger 30 millimeter cosmic crystal where I've done just that. That's the finished product. And on the back, you can see how I've sandwiched my suspension in with that second layer of epoxy clay. I'd like to thank you so much for joining me today in the Fire Mountain Gems and Beads Jewelry Making Studio. For more tips, tricks, and how-tos, visit us at firemountaingems.com.